All right, guys, what is happening? Escort is here. Damn, he almost smashed my head off the bonnet there. Jeez. Still here, though. Nothing's happened on it, as you can see. Guys, what is happening? It is Easter Sunday today, so I'm gonna make my best effort to get this video recorded, edited, and uploaded today. So everyone watching worldwide, most of you lot are in the UK. Happy Easter. I hope you guys and girls got heaps and heaps of chocolate Easter eggs. I didn't get any, but that is a story for another day. However, I know that I haven't really done much on the Escort. I've got some parts coming and I will reveal that in the next video or maybe the one after because I bought another brand new car. Well, brand new second hand. And it is a 2013 model Toyota FJ Cruiser. So let's cue the intro and I'll get stuck into this vehicle. All right, guys, so here it is my brand new second hand two thousand and thirteen. Toyota FJ Cruiser. Now I know I've got a lot of guys and girls that watch my channel from the UK. You guys did not get this vehicle in the UK. So I'm gonna give you a rundown of it, but it's basically a Land Cruiser Prado um, or like the Land Cruiser 150, 120, 150 chassis with a brick for a body. And I'll show you what I mean. Let's have a look at the front. It is kind of brick shaped. Now, if the image looks a little bit different today to my normal videos, because I'm recording this whole video on a GoPro. So let me know in the comments what you thought about um, how the video looked on the GoPro instead of the current model iPhone. But this vehicle, like I said, it's 2013 model. It is around about 10 and a half years old. Um, it was first registered in November, actually. 2013 so it puts it about 10 and a half years old and it is fully kitted out I'm gonna have to open the back to show you everything but it is fully kitted out with absolutely everything you could possibly want for a camping rig so let's go through this control panel here because this is aftermarket it's got the driving lights which are the two spotlights you saw on the front um, grill the work lights which i'll show you there off the back the led light bar which i'll show you again which is on the front so basically this thing lights up like um, a christmas tree rear parking sensor is standard air compressor in the engine bay which i'll show you um, and a front diff lock, which is also aftermarket option. So this thing's had a lot of money spent on it just here. And that's to turn the traction control off. And then from there, I've got my UHF CB radio, which is absolutely essential for when you're going out back in Australia. And then a couple little things in here. This came with the car. I think it just kind of came with it because well, you guys can tell why this came with the car, surely. Let's have a look under the bonnet. And then we'll come back, we'll talk about these gauges here. There we go. Toyota fashion. We have the gas struts on the bonnet, which is really cool. Don't have to worry about looking for a bonnet stay or anything like that. Pretty standard looking engine bay. Um, it has been fitted with a snorkel here, which is a basically an air ram, and it comes all the way down through the inner wing into the air box. This allows a deeper wading depth, so I can drive you know like further the 
into water without having water ingress into the um, airbox. Hopefully the wind today is not too bad for you guys. Um, I'll be fairly quick with this. This is my air compressor and it's an ARV air compressor if you can see that there or it may be better there you can see arb compressor these are not cheap so this has um again you can tell it's had a lot of money spent on it at some point in its life it does need a bit of a tidy up but there's this blue airline that comes out and it goes all the way down into the um the center of the two front wheels so this is a compressed air operated front diff lock which is fantastic because that's what you want worn winch fitted as well w-a-r-n not worn as in like it's worn down and doesn't work does work i do need to re-spool it though with some new rope because this rope looks pretty tired so i'm probably going to take the winch out and give it a little bit of a refurb i do want to take the bars off the bar work i want to do want to take all this off um and basically what I want to do with this is uh, rhino liner it. So basically the, the stuff that looks like uh, grip tape on a, a skateboard. I want to cover all the bar work in that rhino liner stuff. That's the engine, four liter V6 petrol. Not too good on fuel, but it's not too bad either. So we come back in here and we'll have a look at this stuff. So this is a scan gauge, uh, plugs into the OBD2 port, just basically gives me things like um, fuel economy, revs, engine speed, um, load, all that kind of stuff. And then here, if you can make it out on the camera, is a tire pressure monitoring system. And then this is basically a monitor system that's 90% battery power that is left in the lithium battery because it has a dual battery system and I'll show you the, the whole dual battery system, but this is basically like a monitor system for the dual battery. Um, you know, like current um, battery that's in the lithium battery. How long I've got left, more than 10 days, it says at the current usage of, of 0.1 amps. All right, so that's pretty good. Oh, there we go how many I'm using for, you know, like how much current I'm using for things like lights, fridge, DC, DC charger, which I'll show you all in a second. Main starter, how much battery power is left in the main starter. So I haven't started the car in around about um, four, three days, three days. So, and it was at 100%. So I think this might be an indication to me that the main starter battery might need replacing soon. Um, so we'll get on that. It does have a water tank. And again, I will show you guys where that is. This is pretty cool. Uh, temperature of the lithium battery and temperature of inside the cabin of the vehicle. A barograph. And then we're back at the start. So let's open these door here because the FJ Cruiser comes with suicide doors. I'm just gonna put you down here and open this. There we go. So this is my lithium battery. It's a hundred amp hour lithium battery you can see there 100 a on the other side of the a it'll have a h so it's 100 amp hour lithium battery um i looked these up online these are around about 15 1600 i think um very very expensive this is a little bit difficult to get off so i'm probably going to put on um like a strap and it looks like at some point it has had a strap on it but somebody's chopped it off um, but i will be putting another strap on that to make it easier to get out and if we come back around this other side into needs a bit of a wash we'll talk about the wheels and tires in a sec so open this other suicide door and then in here we've got a dc dc charger and then all of the um, trips for the different things along there okay these are all turned off 
at the moment, but this back one here, I think is accessories. Uh, yep, yeah, let's, let's just turn that on. You hear a little beep. It's okay for that to be on while the engine's not running or anything like that, because it's gonna be running off that um, battery system in there. And it does have, I do have a solar panel for it, um, but it's unplugged and in the garage at the moment. I'll show you that. So yeah, that is my, DC DC charger and that charges the battery in there whilst the engine is running or whilst I have the solar panel on the roof. So now that I've turned the accessories on, let's come around and have a look at the money shot. I open up custom made rear bar, relocated the um, reversing camera, but you really can't see much when that wheel is in the way anyways. And the aerial of course there for the UHF. Now this all came with the car. Everything in here came with the vehicle. So the ARB fridge um, and it's turned off at the moment, but again, all I gotta do is press it to turn it on now because obviously I've turn that switch inside there to turn the accessories on. So we turn it off. Because I don't have the solar plugged in. But just twist that, pull it out. This whole drawer slides out like so. And I got the ARB fridge freezer in here, nice and clean. And the fridge itself does hold a little bit of charge. That's why the light sticks on, but basically specs on the fridge freezer, which is cool. In here, we've got a red arc, 700 watt uh, pure sign inverter, which is actually really cool. Um, I, I thought it was bigger, but uh, for some reason, I thought it was a 2000 watt, but it's not it's a, a 700 watt, but that's cool. So I'm probably going to change that out for a more powerful one because there is some things I want to run, but that is definitely going to do the job for the meantime. And basically little cubby holes with heaps of stuff inside. But this is the coolest bit. So if I just sit you down here on the Escort, and you guys have seen this car enough, so you know what it looks like. these little Ooh. we go so this is basically my cooking area and get my stuff out of the fridge you can put my stove and everything here or I could have a table set up not there obviously because there's a car but you know like when you're out camping um, could do your food preparation here for example um, and inside there's a whole heap of stuff again all this came with the vehicle um, which I'm quite astounded at which is crazy brand new like spatula and it's not even one of the brand new second hand things it's literally brand new along with brand new not even second hand brand new but actual brand new cracked pepper which is pretty pretty cool and there's something else in here i wanted to show you here we go because save space right you probably think it was like a can opener or something like that but let's have a look so if we go like this and then we open it up lock it in a handle for my pot there we go so that again is pretty cool and this is a full custom drawer setup as well and I need to press these in Oh, these ones here back here, sorry, not those ones. Was those ones. Let's push it all the way in. And lock it off. There we go. Just took a bit of force to lock off. 
So the water tank is behind here. And if you can see it up in here is the uh, filler neck for the water. And I've got a light as well inside there. Okay, well, turn that off. All right, so inverter to turn the um, Red Arc inverter on. Got all of this stuff here. The work lights, which are those ones, right? Um, camping lights. They were all turned on, sorry. Um, water pump, 12 volt outlet, which is um, here. And rear lights. There. I turned them all on by accident. I wondered what that noise was. And that noise was the water pump, because here is a connection for the water pump. And the tank, I said, is in there. But there's another connection um, down here for the water pump as well. And of course, heaps of space here to put a swag and some other stuff, clothes and whatnot. And then another huge drawer of stings, airline, tie downs for the awning, which I'll show you guys. Actually, it's just there on the floor behind the gearbox. And just a whole pile of stuff, things for a shower, um, adjustable wrenches, or not adjustable wrenches, but basically wrenches to adjust the adjustable suspension. And now that we're talking about that, let's have a look. So this FJ Cruiser came with a lift kit. And you can see that in there. I believe it is a two inch Dobinson's lift kit. I thought it might've been a two and a half, but um, looking at the specs online, um, I'm pretty sure that it is a two inch lift, not a two and a half. And at some point the tires have been rubbing on the upper control arms because they are monstrously large, wide, 34 inch and a half diameter mud tires that are 315 wide. So 12, I think that's 12 and a half inches wide as well. So a two inch lift kit there, um, which is really cool. And you can basically tell because it hasn't got a diff drop and there's not a whole lot of crazy shitty angle um, in the CV joints, recovery points, method, alloy wheels. I do need to change the front discs pads though, not the discs, but just the pads. The tires are basically brand new. And this one I really like around the back here. And we'll jump down. Oh, just kill that ant. Airbags in the rear suspension, which is cool. That's absolutely mega in both sides because, and they pump up here on the rear bar. So when I load the back up, it won't sag and just be like, shitty handling and all that kind of stuff. So basically guys, that is my brand new secondhand Toyota FJ Cruiser. And here is the solar panel for it that sits on the roof. Really excited to make some camping videos for you. One of you guys, I think it was Lee, um, you might've said um, on one of the other videos, be really cool if you went out and showed us some parts of Australia, different places and all that kind of stuff. Well, mate, now I can. So look forward to those videos. Look forward to all the next videos coming on the Escort where I make up all the custom brake lines and the custom bracket for the um, two brake master cylinders. And then when we put the engine in and wire in the Haltech ECU, and fire it up for the first time. Doesn't sound like there's a lot left to do, does it, when you put it out like that, but really there is a lot left to do. Guys, thanks so much for being here. Happy Easter. If you're still here watching now and you haven't yet subscribed, you clearly like what you're seeing, so make sure you subscribe and I'll catch you in the next episode.